What's up guys, Matty here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about music production desks. I have tried quite a few over my years. I've had an Argosy Halo, which is a fantastic desk. I had the Zawar desk, one of those, the ones they sell on Sweetwater. I have now a sit-stand desk. It's from Herman Miller now, but they were a different company before. Uh, and I've tried a few other desks over the years. In today's video, I wanted to discuss all the different desks, their pros and cons, and also go over some cheaper desks that might be good for you if you're interested in getting one of those. Let's go. Okay, so first and foremost, the first desk I had in this studio was the Halo, the original Halo. And I had the one with the speaker stands mounted. Not that I didn't have the monitor stands, but just the speaker stands. And it was not the sit stand, it was just a regular one. Um, the sit stand hadn't come out yet. So this desk was awesome. The the build quality is amazing, and you feel like a, a king when you're sitting at it. However, one thing I would suggest if you're gonna get this desk would be to get it without the speaker mounts. They're not in a bad place, but if you ever want to move your speakers around, if you want a wider uh, sound field or a closer sound field, depending on the size of the speakers, it can be a little bit limited on where you can place the speakers. I ended up not even using them after a while and getting speaker stands so I can move my speakers where I want them to be. So I would suggest getting it without the speaker stands so that you can move your speakers around better. Now, the reason I ended up selling this desk was two reasons. My area here is pretty tight and it was taking up a lot of room. Also, I wanted to be able to just turn and change knobs easily. The way the ergonomics is of the Halo is you have to do this like, and I don't know if you can see in the camera, but like reach over and turn knobs to make adjustments. And that's fine if you're not doing a lot, but there was something about it that like, I just felt like I'd be out of the sound field and I'd be changing things. And it just never felt like right to me. The other reason was just sound. So, so the bigger desk you have, the more reflections you have from your speakers and the more it can affect the sound of what you're hearing from the speakers negatively. So you always wanna try to, try to get the smallest desk you actually can. And so that was one reason I wanted to get rid of it. It was a little too big. And then I didn't like the racks on the side being up so high. I felt like it might be affecting the frequency uh, coming from the speakers. And I did notice once I get to a smaller desk that there was a bump in the, the upper mids that calmed down a bit once uh, I had a smaller desk. But that being said, the Halo is an amazing desk. There's days where I really do miss it because it was just so comfortable to work on. Built world-class. I think if they built like a small desk without any racks, I'd probably just go out and buy it because they just make such good stuff. So the next desk I purchased, which turned into a freaking disaster, was the Zawar desk, the Maestro 24. Now, this was gonna be my solution to not having the racks on the side and just having all my gear in front of me and being able to turn the knobs. So I got the desk and I built it and set it all up and I just didn't feel right. I, it felt a little cheaper from coming from the Argosy. And then the biggest problem I had is I like to like sit back and stretch out my legs when I'm working. A lot of times I slouch and I know that's not good ergonomically, but it's just the way I like to sit. With this desk, and this is something to be careful of when you're looking at desks, you see this big wooden piece right here? That doesn't allow you to be able to stretch your legs out. So you have to make sure if you're gonna get a desk like this with the wood or something in front of it, that you don't wanna ever have to stretch your legs out. You wanna just keep them in front of you and work. If you're that kind of person, then these desks could be wonderful for you. For me, it just wasn't the case. So whether you're buying this desk or another one, I do suggest you you look out for that if that's something that you have in mind. Um, I ended up selling this desk to a friend, so I didn't turn into a huge loss, but it was a lesson learned on my desk preferences. So after that fiasco, I decided I just want to get a small desk and then maybe get my gear on the sides of me. I think that way I can turn my ears still in the sound field, but I can turn the knobs easily on either side. And then I wanted something that I could stand up with while doing edits. Now. I know the sound isn't gonna be perfect because if my speakers are down here and I'm up here, it's off. But if I'm just doing like small changes or editing files, um, I don't necessarily need to be like perfectly in the, the triangle. So I got this desk. It's by Herman Miller now. It was by a different company before and I think it was a little bit cheaper. Herman Miller's since tax it. And if you're looking for a sit-stand desk, this thing is awesome. It works really well, super sturdy, whether it's down or up, you know, but there's a ton of different sit-stand desks out there. And this is just the one I ended up with. It's a nice footprint. It's much smaller. 
Um, and like I said, it did help a bit with the frequencies of the speakers. And then I also needed some a, a couple racks to put my gear on in the sides. This is what I ended up getting. So I ended up getting this one from Sweetwater, the RAB Audio Pro Rack. This thing's awesome, built like a tank. I also had an Argosy one, which is on my right side. It's a cool rack, but look at the price of this. This is a 10, 10 racks, 589 bucks versus this one, which is 12 racks. And this is only 319 bucks. And honestly, the, the build quality is good on either of them. And to be even more honest, the wheel keeps falling off on this Argosy where the um, RAB rack has been sturdy and is working great. So if you wanted to try to get something like the way I have it set up with the small desk in the middle and then put some of your rack stuff to the side on rollers uh, so you can even move it around if you need to, this one is really good and I do recommend it. Okay, so lastly, let's just look on the front page of Sweetwater Studio Desk so we can look at some stuff and I'll talk through my thoughts on some of them. Just wanna say I am completely not sponsored by Sweetwater or any other company. I'm doing this just on my own, so you can buy whatever desk you want. I'm not getting a kickback from it. But showing these, here's some cheaper options. Now, I don't like the ones with the stuff above, like the rack above, it might be good for speaker placement. If you're in a really tight place and you're gonna have to put your desk against a wall, then this one might be good. But just like I was saying with the Argosy, I would suggest trying to just get a straight flat desk and then uh, speaker stands. I think that's the better way to go. With that being said, and then if you're looking at like the slate one here, which you'd only really get this if you're buying the screens, but you gotta be careful of that wood part I'm talking about from, you know, if you do like to stretch your legs out. Same thing here, this is the RAB. It looks like there's some wood in the back. That might not affect you because you're sitting up forward, but it's just something to keep in mind. All right guys, so those are my thoughts on different desks that you might wanna purchase. Uh, let me know which one you like in the comments below. If you have any questions about desks and the ones I've used, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'll make sure to answer them. If you do need your songs mixed or mastered, hit me up at mixandmastermysong.com. You can also find my vocal presets and courses there as well. Talk to you soon.